what was like your like creative contribution like when it comes to bro you know he got we already want to do anyway regardless but like I just come in and just try to like add story to it and add like, you know, different elements to it. The album cover, I was, I had these, like, I have an archive of yeah. all the, um, of these like punk magazines. Oh. Like, like, I'm talking about so many pages, so many pages. And it's, I even got a book. It's so funny though, because I was reading them. I had the book yeah. like, like two years before I even like remembered. And then by the time it was like time for the cover, so bro, he like, like it's throwing selfies over it. Yeah. So, Cover technically, damn. <laughs> it's funny as it sounds. I said with C Cuddy, his whole verse. It was oh, me right. and him. What's going on, guys? You're watching Kids Take Over right now in LA. Um, I'm sitting here with a really talented but <laughs> humble dude. Um, with my guy Jay, how's it going? What's up, my boy? Well, I'm up? calling you Jay, but like, what what you want the public to call um, you, like Opium Jay? You like, can call me Jay. Yeah, like Jay, but Opium Baby too. It's my art handle. I call yeah, it Opium Baby. So. Yeah, I wanted to sit down with you for a minute because you do like a variety of cool stuff. It's not just yeah. one thing, yeah. but you've chosen to not really like talk about it for so long, you know. <laughs> so I was like, I was like confused at first. I was like, why does he want to sit down with me? You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what's up? Why is this like the first time? I don't know. You know, people just it go crazy in my comments. You know, you know what it look like in there. It's like it just I don't rap or anything, so it's like to show what I do, I just have to do it, you know, and I'd rather just do that than Yeah. You know, talk. Right. So I, mean, I think uh, uh it's time for people to hear my words, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's about I don't time to really speak too much online. A lot yeah. of people don't even know what my voice sound like. That and also, there's just like if you Google you, like there's not too much info about yeah, you. Nah. You'd have to go old out. stuff. Oh, very old stuff. Yeah, which you know we're gonna get into and all that. Um, <laughs> let, let's get like your real story, right? So yeah. you're not you're not from LA. No, yeah, no, no, no. And you're actually you like you were born in like South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I was born in like Columbia. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where all my family lived. Okay. When um when I was two, I moved to Atlanta. I went to LA like for like uh like vacation one year. My mom uh, was dating this actor and she got them. Uh, an actor? Yeah. Oh, an sure. actor. <laughs> it's like big actor? I'm not gonna say his name. Okay, all right. Yeah, he big though, like a lot of people know for sure. So he was like, you should get him like headshots and stuff. Like, so I always been like kind of fried for like a little kid, like too much energy and stuff. <laughs> yeah. like, she just was like, all right, did some headshots and then like got it immediately got a call to me with this agent and stuff. And then I started working that same summer. So I had to actually like come back to Atlanta and like my mom was just with it. Like she believed in me. Like, oh yeah. Hell Cause yeah. I didn't stop working that whole summer. Like I was really only supposed to go out there for like a month or something, but like. But when you, like, when you say you were working, like what do you mean? Yeah, like, you were acting. Oh, and just yeah, yeah, like yeah, anything yeah. or yeah. yeah. Acting for sure. It was yeah. the first thing that I was doing. Like as a kid, my mom, like that's how I got us from Atlanta to LA. So you so, basically moved yeah. your family from Atlanta yeah, to LA. Yeah, yeah most definitely. That's my mom cool. was going to school and stuff, so like, you know, me doing that was like a job, you know. It felt sorry to feel like a job. It's easy to come natural, but you yeah. know, that shit feel like it's something you're forced to do, you don't really want it. Was that paying a lot? I'm so curious. Like in the first <laughs> like when you just tried to become an actor, like how does that make you money right away? It know? was. I mean, it depends on what type of jobs you get. You know, you got to be scale and stuff, SAG, after it's a lot of different stuff going on with that. But like, they pay well. Yeah. They pay well, most definitely. Like Nike commercials and stuff like oh, that. Oh, you were in like Nike commercials? Yeah, like, oh, I did like a Nike short film with Kobe. I rode in a helicopter with Kobe. Stop. Yeah, everybody in the NBA, LeBron, Kyrie. It's like Nike bring your game commercial. It's a- No way. I'm trying to remember what year. Yeah. 2014, 2015 probably, yeah. Sure. Damn, I'm gonna Google that and put it on the screen if that's Don't like. do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna look at it for myself. No, I'm though. playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you hell can't yeah. See it. LeBron, we're here to figure out who our favorite player is. Okay, come on in. Future, what's up? Man, I want you to come over to the studio and listen to this track. That's yeah, mad cool. So, like, what kind of um, like TV shows or films were you in? Um, I really, that really didn't like. I did Ben and Kate. It was a show on Fox. It got canceled. Yeah. Um, I did a few episodes on this Disney show, um, Girl Meets World. It's like yeah. a spin off of Boy Meets World. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, you didn't like it? You feel me? It's just like, at a certain point, like, that yeah. shit was cool. Like, 
but I wanted to do what made, you know, coming from puberty and then growing up, it's a lot of shit, like a lot, yeah. a lot of like stuff you got to take into consideration. So it just felt corny to me. No, I feel it. Obviously, yeah. like, that's not what you want to do your whole life, you know? Definitely, yeah. What were kind of like uh, the toughest parts about um, being an acting? Like, was it the fact that it was hard to get gigs or was it that like, that's not what you wanted to do anymore? It's just not what I wanted to do anymore. Yeah. It's just easy. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy for everybody, but to me, it's like semi-natural. It's easy, yeah. kind of. It wasn't a force, for sure. I would start doing it again now, actually. You know, now you got shows like Euphoria and stuff like that. But when I'm coming up as a teenager, like 2015, we're on Fairfax. Like, yeah. we're on... We trying to get clothes. Where's the raft? Undercover. Right. <laughs> well, wrong. I'm just so confused because like you went from this like childhood actor to randomly like just hanging out with all the the dope people like wearing the nice clothes. Like, how did you even transition from that? Like, it really. I, I don't even know. I was just doing the same thing. It's really the Fairfax, honestly. You were just chilling on Fairfax? <laughs> the street Fairfax, bro. That shit like it brought all of us together. Like mm. that's how I met. As soon as I came to LA, I met. My best friend John Ross, and then you know from there on and so forth. Like it was definitely Fairfax. We met a lot of friend group through Fairfax. Yeah. Anybody else coming to be cool type shit? Yeah. What was kind of like your uh, initial like group like with John? Like who were you linking with, and like how did that kind of <laughs> shape like uh, you know where he went? Uh, initial group man, it was me, John, my boy Kevin Moon. Mm. Um, some irrelevant people, you feel me? <laughs> Just people you're not, like, Yeah, 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 for sure, for yeah. sure, but it's some members standing up. What sure. was, like, um, you know, like, your first years, like, being on Fairfax with John and stuff like that, like, when did you decide, like, yo, I want to do, like, something creative and not acting, you know? I was already, was already on that. Like, you know, yeah. like, it's, like, my first Instagram name is, like, J-A-Y-X Creased. Yeah, That's the brand I was going to make when I was in sixth grade, bro. It's, like, something I always wanted to do, so. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like we kinda had like a scene going on of we're the only we're the kids of Fairfax type yeah. shit. Like so it's like it was us, you know, you got the New York section, you got Luca, you got SPC God, I mean you got LA, it's me, John. Mm. You feel me? So I don't know. I feel like we went so crazy in those years. Like it's honestly like slept on people don't even understand. Like, bro, really, honestly it's a show about it, to be honest with you. You ever okay. seen a show on called Fairfax on Amazon Prime? No, have you guys seen it? <laughs> no, I haven't. Bro, look that show up, bro. It's yeah. literally about like our lives and somebody took our personalities and everything, like, mm. and made it into a show about kids on Fairfax. Like, really? You gotta watch it, bro. It's spooky. Okay. If y'all watching, y'all owe me some money. For <laughs> sure. Nah, I mean, so, it's, okay, so then you started doing some creative stuff. Um, what was like the first, like, actual, like, sick project that you worked on where you're, like, proud of it? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I felt like I love what what Red did because mm. it was a lot of lot of like just like in the moment, like just like pure art form like moment. So like maybe I would have to say probably that because okay. it was just like flowing. Like sometimes shit flows like but the the energy was there, like mentally everything was there, like yeah. For sure. What was like your like creative contribution like? When it comes to bro, you know, he got what he already want to do anyway, regardless. But like, I just come in and just try to like add story to it and add like, you know, different elements to it, make it into like a translated type shit, like basically like. Yeah. The album cover, I was, I had these like, I have an archive of yeah. all the, um, of these like punk magazine. Oh. Like, like, I'm talking about so many pages, so many pages. And even got a book. It's so funny though, because I was reading them. I had the book yeah. like like two years before I even like remembered. And then by the time it was like time for the cover, I looked. So bro, he like oh, storing selfies over it. Yeah. So cover technically, damn. Um <laughs> it's funny as it sounds, I said with cut cutty his whole verse. It was oh, me right. and him, you know, however they feel about his verse. Yeah. But, but so, so you had a role in that. Like, were you like in the room and you were like giving? Just me and him. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Was that like your first time meeting Cuddy or something or? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. I believe so, yeah. But you know, I, I listen to his music though, so I, I know like. Of course. You know, like, 
Speeding Bullet to Heaven. Heaven is my favorite album. Yeah, so. A lot of people would say that's his worst album, but nah, I'm, that's, that's interesting that you said that's his best. This is his best album. Yeah. That's beautiful. Interesting. Really, it's beautiful. You have like a really like uh, distinct ear, you know? Because I don't think like many people would have said that. And I feel like that's what led you to like, you know, like you essentially found people like this for Lonely. Like you have a very wow. distinct ear. Yeah. So like what goes into that? Like, like what do you look for in an artist when you sign them? I feel like people, when they listen to music, it's a lot of other benefactors that like just get in the way mm -hmm. of them instead of just like actually listening to what it looks like. Let your ears do it. Or they let too much other stuff get in the way of their decision and stuff like that. Like, I don't know when it comes to me, like, I feel like it sounds weird, but I feel like I try to listen in the future. You know, like I, I, I hear what it could be. I see what it could be, and like mm -hmm. where it's going, like the rawness of it. Like some people aren't able to like understand it at first, or see that far, see what a person could do, yeah. thinking about where they're at right now. You yeah. know, because at the point where I hit up Lone, Lone was recording himself, yeah. he recording himself, and already doing everything himself, shooting videos and everything. So mm. he work ethic, everything. And I saw, I was listening and I'm like, oh, I know when he gets into an actual studio, it's so weird. So. Yeah. Are you saying that kind of like other people, let's say like a or whatever, like they're not really able to see someone like super early on and see like what it could become? You know, and yeah. And it's like, you just gotta have a, a real ear for the thing. You gotta like, have taste. You, like, can't, you can't like, like for, teach taste. Yeah, either, like, you know? yeah, like for the most part, like yeah. most a and <laughs> You think yeah. it's more so like data driven? Yeah, like, yeah, like it's awesome. I don't know what it is, bro. It's, yeah. I don't know what what it's become, but yeah, for sure. You feel like um, having taste is, is is a skill. I feel like a lot of people deny that and be like, nah, like, mm -hmm. bro, that's not like a, it's that, a skill. It's a skill. It's yeah? a skill. It's a discipline. It's yeah. a practice. It's all that. Mm -hmm. It's damn near hereditary sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for real, I think I get it from my grandma. Yeah. Where do you uh, personally find music then? Like, I'm curious, is it like you just go on SoundCloud and... Wormholes, bro. Yeah. I'm like trapped in wormholes, like YouTube wormholes, old music, finding old music. Like, you know, like that feeling that you get when you find a song like that's old. Oh, yeah, that's like, the best feeling. How ever. have I not heard this song earlier? Like, yeah. constant search for that. Mm. Movies too, songs and movies, same shit. What you mean? Like... I do the same with the same way I do with songs. I do the same with movies. Like, oh, okay. Just rifle through, rifle through everything, any source, any river, and mm. whatever sparks to me, sparks to me. You know, because like me growing up, hip hop is of course, and R and B is my first language, just based off the household I grew into. Okay. And then my mom, like, she doesn't really listen to like she listens to what she listens to. So like, yeah, I don't know. I think it just has part of me being like a. I don't know, like a nerd, bro. Like I'm just, yeah. just love music. I like it's no better feeling for me, like finding some good music or a good movie make you feel some type of way. Let me ask you, bro. What's your favorite movie? Ooh, don't do me like that. No, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you who my favorite director is. Or Ralph Bashi. Mm -hmm. I love all of his films. Mm -hmm. They're like rotoscopic, like shot, like animation shot on top of real. It's like some. It's cheap, but it's. Beautiful, like he made some, made a heavy metal, mm. heavy traffic, all those movies. He's done fire, mm -hmm. done fire. You ever take like inspo from those movies when it comes to giving like music, uh, like advice? Uh, like, do you feel like there's any like correlation? Oh, yeah, there? it all correlates music, clothes, movies, it all is it's one thing, honestly. Like, to me, yeah, I wrap it all in one because it's like I don't just have like one passion, it's like multiple things that make me get out of bed in the morning, so. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, because you don't want to give away the sauce, but like, what's like some current music or like sounds even, <laughs> just like type of sound, not even mm. like artists, just like sounds that you're the sound. rocking with, yeah. Mm. I don't know. On my free time, man, I listen to grunge music, but. Grunge music, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I listen to a lot of Alice in Chains. Mm. Love Alice in Chains. Other than that, though, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what about like. I want to, I swear, bro, I want to tell you, but it's so crazy out here, bro. Like, people like. No, I feel it. Like before like, you even get to move your piece, yeah. they are already on it. So the moment I, they hear this, no, I feel it. It's crazy. Well, okay, let's just say outside of like your world, right? Because mm -hmm. like, you said you love RB. I love RB. Yeah. 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 So, what's like, what's like some other artists that people would not expect that you listen to at all, you know? Because I'm going to be honest, if someone talked to you, they'd be like, oh, he probably listens to like. 
his camp. Exactly. Like some shit that you listen to, like R&B wise or something that people just wouldn't expect. Yeah, exactly. I listen to, bro. I listen to a lot of Radiohead, Bjork. I listen to Alice in Chains. I listen to a lot of um, One Tricks, Point Never. I'm probably sliding that name, but mm-hmm. um, what else, bro? Patrice Russian, bro. I listen to something, bro. I can't even, if I were to show you with, in my, oh my, yeah, <laughs> it would look ridiculous. You'd be like, what is this? Right, right, right. Yeah. No, I believe it, bro. I think mm-hmm. that people sometimes will like box someone in. And be so like, whatever nah, speaks to me, bro. Yeah. I got music then. I can't even understand in my phone, like yeah, from the seventies, Estonian funk. But um, the song is so hard, right? And it's making me feel a certain type of way. So, for sure, for sure. Well, how do you find like old music like that? You just like dig in the crates. You got a rifle. You got a rifle. And YouTube, YouTube algorithm is fire too. If you really look through it for real. Yeah. Even with the movies too, like yeah, you just gotta give it a try. Mm. Gotta give it a try. One thing I wanna know is like you're you're on the internet a lot. I'm sure you're on the internet a lot, but you're, there's stuff being made about you on the internet. So <laughs> what's your thoughts on the like news side of things or like hip hop blogs? Like, I'm sure you have like your own opinion on that. You know, there's things yeah. that you like probably about it, things that you just don't fuck with. Yeah. Um, I like, I like what you guys do, but like I, most of it is just like clickbait. Mm. Like a lot of it is just clickbait and it's just like, I don't know, bro. Mm. This is weird. Weird to me, you know? yeah. Clickbait and saying weird stuff, weird yeah. stuff about people. It's just like it's fried, bro. Well, because you're you're one of these like influential people, and you're around a lot of influential people. Do you think it's kind of weird when people make videos and like video essays about things that are like personal and not music? You think? Yeah, but that, it just comes with it, I guess. Like, yeah, it comes with it. So. Yeah, can't do nothing but respect it for sure. Is is it weird to you that like? I can't tell if you want to be in front of the camera or if you want to be like behind the scenes, right? Like I just genuinely can't tell. Right. So is it weird that like by default you're just getting all this attention and all these comments? Yeah. Like, what do you actually feel about that? I don't know. I'm like, what? What do y'all want from me? <laughs> <laughs> right. What do y'all want from me? I'm just trying to show y'all some my art, man. I'm trying yeah. to show y'all my my photos, my outfits. Right. And I'm, Right. I don't mean no harm. True, true, true. <laughs> I feel like you're just like about the art. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to show folks my work. Well, that's you know, it. you do creative direction. Like yeah. that's the big role. Like you're a co-founder and also you do creative direction. Exactly. How does that work? Like I have met other people like you. Like I know Mitch does something kind of similar. What's your, your like creative process when it comes to doing creative direction for people? Like how does that work from A to Z? No, it depends on if we talk about like a tape or just like in general let's talk about music but then also clothes i'm, just, yeah, I'm curious yeah, yeah. how you do both yeah but the music is just like on my side anyway they really have it kind of which alley they want to go down yeah anyway and then all, all i try to do is like make it into a cohesive story like with everybody like boom this is this this is your movie this is your movie this is your movie you get what i'm saying so yeah add the the key elements type of shit but for the most part they got it like everybody know what they're doing for yeah. sure everybody knows what they're doing i think that's interesting because even for myself i think i'm a really creative person right however if i have an idea and i'm like 80 percent of the way sure that it's good if you have a creative person on your team that's like it's kind of like getting like a little se- a second opinion that assures you like all right now you're going the right way you yeah know? and i think people don't realize how important it is to have a creative director on your team yeah what do you think the importance is of that because a lot of these artists don't have that yeah be mean because when you're rapping, I mean, you can only see so far in front of yourself. You got a lot of other stuff to deal with. So, like, you need people to be able to see, like, you know, the future. Yeah. So, I think that's where people like me come in and stuff like that. Can see, see outside of yourself. Even you know, I have to look outside of myself sometimes. Do you ever have like a creative director that helps you? You feel like, or no? <laughs> like, what's it for? for no, no. Work? But what I will say is, though, everybody in my gang is we're all into the creative director. Everybody in. And no PM is each other's creative director because we all are each yeah. other's hardest critic. Like, mm. we're gonna be on each other's like, so. I, I met a lot of camp stuff, I'm being honest, that are like not very um, blunt or like critical when it comes to things. Those are like, oh yeah, that's hard. But like, do you feel like it's different with you? Like, do you give honest advice? You know? Yeah, you got yeah. to. You got to. Yeah. I mean, but it's different. You know, my, my advice I give is my brother, so yeah. I can tell him how it is for sure. Right. Tell him how it is and what it's supposed to be. You actually have like helped in the creative direction of music videos as well. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. <laughs> yeah. 
tell me about that because I know like now hearing you have such a love for film, mm -hmm. you did like creative direction for the MDMA video, mm -hmm. right? So tell me about that. For a few more too, but that was like my official like, yeah. yeah. But that one was cool. Yeah, that was my first. It, it didn't come out like, you know, like the treatment, but we worked with what we could though. I think yeah. it came out decent. I might not shoot another music video again. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I might just do it for my, I'd rather do it for my clothes. Okay. Like, you know, because yeah. every time I drop my clothes, it's going to come with a short film because yeah. my, my brand is all about like, you know, again, as we were saying, tying everything together, my love for everything. So yeah, well, the music, the clothes, mm -hmm. the film, I'm bundling it all up in one. So you can, so that's how I can see it. You, people could see it. Yeah. Well, tell me about your brand. Tell us about like, what's like the meaning behind the name? Like, yeah, like, tell me about it. I, I, I saw you at Complex, if people yeah. are watching, mm -hmm. I was at Complex Con and I saw uh, his brand did a collab with you know, your homie John. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can just tell you guys put so much thought into the, the not just the clothes itself, but just like there was a boxing ring and all yeah. that, right? So <laughs> tell me like the meaning behind the name of your brand and yeah. how you started it. St. Peter, St. Peter was one of Jesus' 12 apostles. Mm. He got crucified upside down because he felt like he didn't deserve to be martyred the same way as Jesus did. So, and it's a lot of other stories about, I'm not religious or anything, but like, it's a lot of good, good stories in the Bible, you know, mm. like about people. And St. Peter is the architect, you know, like he was sent to build. And I just feel like, I don't know, just go synonymous with my life. How important do you think um the rollouts are behind your stuff because I know for a fact you wouldn't just put out something and you know have it like a white screen and then like the shirts on it like you know never you never, never. do that right you know because it's really like in my my brand I release in chapters because mm. it's like it's a chapter of my life so I have to actually go through it for people to get a product out of something you know mm. what I mean I have to go I have to sit down to myself and translate like what I've been going through like yeah. for these last six months or something and turn it into the clothes and the mm. music and the movie. So, so so let's say like your most recent drop you did, right? Like what did you go through in order to, to make that? I'm curious. Oh, this one was easy, man. This yeah. part was easy though, because you know, John and him, like, you know, our brands are like sister and brands for right, like a little right. bit anyways. Like like our friendship is like Yeah. Well, how, how did you get into uh design and clothes in the first place. Like you must have had like inspirations at, at first, right? Like Um uh, Yeah, you know, look yeah. What what was I in seventh sixth grade, seventh grade? Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to make my own brand like everybody else, honestly. Yeah. How are you dressing back then like compared to now? Like I was yeah. dressing the same. I was wearing red black <laughs> For red. Real? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Same. I feel same like swag. I feel like around that time it was more. I so just had like, a different hair. My hair okay. was as long. <laughs> what did you have? Like a buzz cut or something? Yeah. No, I had a. I was growing my hair out. Oh, okay. So it was a flat top. Okay. Okay. But, I feel yeah. you. What What's your thoughts on? Because you understand that like the way that you dress and your camp is like really influential. What do you What's your thoughts on like when other people start dressing the same? Like it also like must feel good, but at the same time. I'm sure there's like you might feel like a little way about it. I mean, yeah, they attach it to something corny, like yeah, and, you know, like with the crepe, you know, it gets outlandish. They get a little out of control. Yeah, <laughs> they get a little out of control, but yeah, that's it. And then, I don't know. I don't want them to think it's like hot topic because mm. this isn't hot topic type of evil. It's just like Eastern European. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I know uh, Ken said this one thing in an interview where he was like, I don't like when people call it an aesthetic, you know? Yeah. I feel like, how do this you feel about that? This is not an aesthetic. This is who I am. Yeah. Genuinely. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. Like how you asked me 2015, you asked Rick, Black Rick. Yeah. Black Rick fits, for sure. Well, does it ever make you want to like change the way you dress if you're like, damn, like, I, yeah, like yeah. I'm doing this and now everyone's for doing sure. it and I don't want to do this anymore. For sure. In two years, like on my next birthday, I'm going to only wear suits for the rest of my life. Oh, keep saying that, but yeah, we're getting yeah. halfway there right now. Yeah. Everyone else is going to start wearing suits. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to switch that up too, yeah? Yeah. No, I feel it. I feel it. I want to ask you something. So you tweeted this one thing one time. It was like... Um, Man, I forget where it was. Basically, you were just saying that like you want you make real clothes, not like IG <laughs> clothes, right? Yeah. And I'm curious what you meant by that. Like, what do you like? like you know how it? they throw up the little shirts and then just put the graphic on the not even a real shirt, just a picture on a shirt, yeah. a picture of a screen, yeah, type shit like like that. And then just to really say like it's not just 
it's not just a money grab or mm. anything like this is all like this is what I plan on doing mm. this is what I've always planned on doing for the rest of my life so like it's serious mm. you know what I mean like that's what even took me so long to even really put out the brand because like like if I, I could have settled I could settle and give everybody edible stuff you know it, cheap however they want to do it but yeah that's not that's not how it's not my brand identity i can't sacrifice one what's your thoughts on people yeah of course what's your thoughts on people that start uh, like brands but in the beginning they don't have enough money so you know then they have go to crazy money. go crazy but like, yeah, but like they have to do it yeah you know? yeah you do you got to do what you got to do most definitely yeah i know i'm not fought them yes yeah. do that as long as it's original if you could change one thing about the fashion industry or like community like what what would that be change i wish i could change the get ready with me it's, i hate you mean, those things you don't like that <laughs> yeah. or you just find that corny yeah yeah i'm gonna do one though <laughs> no man <laughs> no, i'm playing yeah I'm talking I believe um did you have any part in like the the most recent drop like i know you have your own brand but like the narcissist drop did you have any part in like consulting for that or no we did some like photo yeah of course but you know it's like a high mind when it comes to situations like that but like mm -hmm. that's him that's that's it that's that's his mind at work for gotcha. sure for gotcha. sure but when it comes to like pictures and stuff like that like i come in and... what about like finding like how do you go about finding models mm -hmm. i know right that's like a good question yeah it's one the ones that came to me last time it was just natural like and then she was like exactly like what I had dreamt about, cause like I, I don't really sleep at night and I don't really dream. Yeah. So what I consider me dreaming is when I'm like up at nighttime, can't go to sleep and just me and mind racing, thinking of the crazy stuff, trying to turn my brain off. That's my version of dreaming. Mm. So I seem to my that fake look like that. <laughs> Those are my dream. Yeah. And I just asked her. Right. So it definitely worked. Do you um do you ever like actively go on things like in Instagram or I'm gonna tell you what's underrated Pinterest, bro. Pinterest for sure. Pinterest is for incredible. Sure. But there's some crazier stuff out there. I don't really want to say on the camera, but yeah. Yeah. If someone found your Pinterest board, it'd be <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Because I honestly think that's where like if you want to do a clothing drop or anything really, and you just want like the initial inspiration, you just like yeah. um you can find yeah. it on Pinterest, but there's. It's books, man. It's books out here. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out here, yeah. It's websites. Yeah. Good websites. Mm -hmm. Archive, archive.org. Yeah. It's everything you could ever want in there. Right, Just right. Just look. No, I feel it. I feel it. You know, one thing that's interesting about you, I think, is, like I said, you do multiple things, right? There's kids out here who will see that and be like, yo, well, I also like clothes and I like music and and maybe I like doing YouTube. I want to do all these things, but maybe they like lack direction, right? Yeah. What would you say to like a kid that's watching right now that wants to be in your somewhat position, yeah. right? But like lacks that direction. I don't know. You got to just stay on it. You mm -hmm. have to like really stay on it. Can't nobody tell you anything. Like, I don't know. It's hard for me to like try to give other people advice because like I'm the type to run through the battlefield with no armor. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. You got to know what you know and yeah. know you know it and stand on it for sure. Mm. And not let anybody tell you otherwise. You got to just keep going. Keep going. It's going to take forever. It will take forever. It mm. took me a long time and I'm still not anywhere yet. Mm. So, What do you mean by look, it took you a long time? Because from the outside perspective, it seems like you're doing, you've been doing what you love this whole time and it's been successful. Was there like a, a, like a rough period that like... No, nah, it wasn't a rough period. It was just like I was aborting one career path to pursue my next my another career path mm. so it wasn't really like you know i was just like it's like taking a leap you know because mm. i can just like you know to be an acting at that time there's no tattoos there's no living like how i was living when i'm going to new york on the weekend for yeah it's, it's very during much during school yeah. and stuff i'm like going to easy season during school for the weekend coming yeah. back to school like you feel like you learned anything like special from like in my opinion everything i've learned at least 95 percent of it is like just going out in the field getting a camera right you feel like you learn stuff from school as well or was it mainly like being out there oh well, yeah man yeah for sure school is where i learned i had my first everything in school my first fight 
my first interaction with girls at school, everything. <laughs> yeah. So I learned my social skills. School teaches you a lot, honestly, bro. Mm-hmm. School teaches you a lot how to get you kind of prep started for everything, depending on what school you go to, for sure. For real. See, I got the best of both worlds, I feel like. Like, I left, like, Atlanta, like, all my friends was grown ass men, like, big as hell, like, beards, everything. Like, girls in my school pregnant, I come here. I'm around little babies and children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're yeah. the same age, but they little kids. I'm mentally somewhere they're not right. even like at all. Mm. So did you did you finish school out here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. My mom wanted me to. Of course, yeah. You know, I feel like I'm mentioning all these things you do, but I gotta add one thing is you actually have produced before, like you've made beats. <laughs> yeah. Um, made a few beats. Yeah, like like what's some stuff that you've produced? I'm gonna be honest, if I if I search you on genius, like there's like, Nothing comes up. It, well, there's like, no, there's like three different things. There's yeah. the opium, J, A, I, you know, no, like all these different bro. things. Yeah. Um, what, what have you produced? Like, uh, me, Rourke, and um, Richie Soft did Feel Like Dying. Oh, for real? Like yeah, the, yeah, okay. yeah. Last song on there with the Bon Iver sample. Yeah. I just, too lazy to set my was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, bro. That's important. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. Maybe soon. You can give it to my mom. <laughs> give a fight to my mom or something. All right. Well, what else have have you uh, worked on that maybe didn't? It's not um, like published online. It's a bunch. It's a few songs. Yeah. It's a few songs. Yeah. Me and Rourke always made a bunch of stuff together. Me and um, Filthy made some songs. Made made a bunch of beats together. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say the person's name, but I did some beats for somebody else that should be coming out probably okay. soon. I I respect that you. In my opinion, I feel like you should vocalize it a little bit more, you know, just so people know. Mm-hmm. But I do respect that, you know, you could be out here being like, oh, I did this, I did this, I did that, you know? Yeah. What, what, what is it in you that, you know, because I interviewed uh, Wonder Girl the other day, and she's Wonder so Girl. talented. Wonder yeah, Girl, yeah, yeah. Producer yeah, beyond yeah. Travis, right? Very humble person. And I feel like you guys have such similarities. Like, yeah. she's done insane stuff, but she's not out here, like, bragging about yeah, it. Yeah, like, I'm already like, knowing, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Wh- wh- why do you think that is, uh, like, that's like that about you? I don't know, it just comes natural. I feel like I don't feel the need to like boast or anything. Mm-hmm. I just let what I have going on prove it's mm-hmm. do the talking for me for real, for real. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wanna, that's where kind of like the funky stuff gets in online. And people get, <laughs> the kids get crazy because it's like, I'm not about to try to express to you. Like you're gonna find out. Yeah. Like if you're a smart person, mm-hmm. you'll look through my clothes and you'll watch the videos and try to, cause when I watch movies and when I will look at clothes and when I do all of this, I think, I think about what, what was the director thinking about when he was going through this, or what is that? So, that's all I was asking. All I'm asking mm-hmm. is for the same in return. Definitely. For sure. No, but honestly, I respect that about you, bro. And I respect that because you, I don't know if you live out here in LA still, but I feel like everyone in LA is always trying to like sell themselves, right? And I don't really blame them. Yeah. Because you kind of have to do it sometimes. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. you do. It's definitely like a 50 50. But I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've come across people that are just like yeah. mad, annoying. Like, I try bro. to stay away from the wickedness. Yeah. Yeah, I don't go out. Mm. I uh, find it hard to believe that you don't go out. <laughs> no. <nah, wow. laughs> yeah? Really? No, you just seem like you're always like everywhere. everywhere. Nah, like, no. Nah. I probably am everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere, like in the cut, like. like yeah. Yeah. Maybe in the cut. I probably am. I'm everywhere. Right. <laughs> I am everywhere. No, I'm sure. everywhere right now, all at once. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think one of the last things that I wanted to ask you, bro, two things actually, because I think that you're a very smart person. Um, What's your what's your advice for me as like a, a media company, someone trying to do things in an artistic way, in a non clickbaity way, and um, mm. you know, just do everything that, that I love doing. What's what's your advice for me, knowing what you know? Just, yeah, like yeah. don't be afraid to take the long the long road, bro. Don't mm. be afraid to take the long road. Let that let it build organically. Like that's what I had to. I mean, that's what I. That's the only thing I can say. Like just keep going down that road. Like. Keep, keep, keep going, keep going. You got them. You're the, you're the, you're the model. I mean, you, you, you got to tell them. <laughs> you're the business model on how to do it. Like, yeah. you know, you yeah, like, you got it. You already know what to do. Like, Thank you. What you got going on is good, bro. Shit is hard. That's why I chose. And talk with you for sure. Appreciate that, bro. Not this. This is next. Yeah. You feel me? Just like the music and everything else. Like, this is next. You're next. Thank you.
Well, just like you said, bro, it's like, I know what I, I know it's right, but sometimes you need a consultant. You for know? sure. For I've just sure. hired you as a consultant for free, basically. Exactly. <laughs> in this interview. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that'll run you about 50000 You can pay her um, back there. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, but booking the studio alone was some money. So, you know, like, we ain't doing all that. But, hey, bro, the last thing I want to ask you is, what is your end goal with all this? Like, where do you, where do you realistically want to take this? Oh, mm, man. There is no end goal, brother. There's no stopping. Mm. When my heart stops. You feel me? Mm. When my heart stops. I'm taking it as far as my body will allow me. Mm. As long as, as far as the universe will allow me. Yeah. For sure. No, I fully feel that, yeah. So I get my own country. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Hey, bro, this is really fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm glad we got to properly sit down and like, Definitely. I think just even hearing you talk, like I'm super inspired already, you know? I appreciate it, brother. And, appreciate it. and that's me. I know that like when kids watch this, they're going to, you know, they're going to like, this is like their homework. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I haven't said too much, so yeah. they get to hear me talk now. Hell yeah. A little few words. Yeah. I appreciate the inspiration, bro. And thanks for coming on. Nah, I appreciate KTO. you, brother. Hell yeah, bro. Of course, my boy. This is my boy, Jay. Yeah. Watch KTO. Yo, thank you guys for watching that interview with Jay. Appreciate Jay for coming on. Um, just letting you know, we're doing a clothing drop mad soon. I think the day after you see this interview, I'm gonna be releasing those hoodies for you guys. The one that I'm wearing uh, in this interview, the wash black ones and the purple ones. So they're like super like cut and sew custom, like just to a T. Um, so go over to at Kate's Take Over as soon as you see this, um, so you can know when that drops. And we got that Starbucks interview coming.